afternoon, everybody. My name is Laura Hodgkiss. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the event and training team leader here at Staffordshire Chamber of Commerce. And this afternoon, we are delighted to have with us Joe Turner, um, who's going to be doing a webinar on how to grow your business online using local SEO uh, from Kanuka Digital. Um, just a couple of things from my end. Um, so you are using Zoom platform today and we are recording it. So if you have to nip off at any point, you can watch the recording at your leisure um, from our webinar library. Um, and also it's just to let you know from privacy point of view that we will be recording the session today. As I've already said, we cannot see or hear you today, but we will be taking questions from you. And Joe has quite um, um, kindly said that he will take uh, questions throughout the session today, but there'll also be a quick Q and A at the end as well. Uh, for those of you that have never used Zoom before, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a nice little um, um, bar across the bottom, which will give you a couple of functions that you can communicate with us today. So you've got the chat function where you can just type away um, if you want to make a quick comment about the session today. The Q&A, which is where we would suggest you put any questions to Joe to Joe today and if you want to raise your digital hand which you can do uh, pressing the digital button at the bottom and uh, we will be able to go live to you and um, we'll have a live question which you'll be able to answer uh, through speaking and uh, with all that in mind I think that's everything for today so it's over to you Joe. Okay um, thank you very much for the intro and um, hello everyone good afternoon uh, yeah I'm Joe and I'm the digital marketing manager at Kanuka Digital so we are a uh, digital marketing and web design and development agency um, based on Staffordshire Technology Park. Um, so today we're going to talk about how you can grow your business online with good local SEO. Um, I don't know quite what the understanding is or what everyone's understanding in the, um, in the virtual room is of, of SEO uh, and kind of and local SEO as well but um, we'll try and keep it um, sort of probably fairly top level but um, yeah, happy to sort of delve any deeper if, there's, if anyone's got any um, more technical or specific questions. I do appreciate that um, everyone's time is precious. So my goal today is very much to leave you with some actionable tips that you can go away and implement um, today, tomorrow, as soon as time allows, that will help you to actually generate more traffic and more conversions online for your business. So um, a very, very quick bit about us before we kind of delve in a, a, a bit further. So um, as I said, we're a digital marketing and web uh, development agency um, based in Staffordshire in the technology park. Well, ordinarily, we're all currently still operating from our homes and living rooms and kitchens, etc. cetera, um, for the time being. So we work with both local and national clients. So um, just uh, yeah, a few examples, we work with Tile Giant, We've got over 100 stores across the UK, but also a very strong online presence uh, through to people like Clink Hostels, so hostels in London and Amsterdam. And um, also um, doing lots more with local Staffordshire businesses and you know, through, our, um, through our chamber um, membership, talking more to local businesses who have perhaps both physical shops, but also um, online stores uh, and websites. And we're, um, we, we actually grew out of our a parent agency called iWeb, who have been around for um, over 25 years now, and um, uh, predominantly a, um, a web development agency. They do quite large e-commerce websites, but um, we started as the digital marketing uh, department in-house at iWeb, and then have kind of grown from there um, over the last three, four years into now standing on our own two feet, still in the same office, but um, we don't just work with e-commerce clients, as I've said, we kind of, we're, we're happy to, uh, and we will work with um, yeah, people, whether it's B2B, B2C, lead generation, e-commerce, um, and yeah, just to say we're accredited Google partners as well. So um, what we'll cover today, um, loose agenda if you like, what is low class yo? Um, let's just spend a bit of time understanding what that is and you know how perhaps your understanding of that um, differs versus what just you know, traditional SEO is, why it's important, um, and then how you can optimise for local SEO. And um, that's the kind of meat of, of today's presentation. And then we've got some actual results. Um, so some real life case studies from clients that have done some of these steps that we're going to go through and, and done this work and how it's um, actually benefited their business. Um, and most importantly, really, the end goal is to um, leave you with some actionable insights to improve online visibility for your business. Um, like I say, do shout up if anyone's got any questions as, as we go through. Happy to, happy to take them. Equally happy to kind of do them at the end as well. Um, so local SEO, what's that? Well, this is a local SEO talk for, for local people. 
Um, hopefully that's a reference not lost on, on everyone in the room. Um, just wanted to take a bit of time to understand, like I say, the, the difference between uh, SEO and, and local SEO. So if we think about it, traditional SEO as optimizing your online presence to attract more business and, uh, from search engines, well, local SEO is, is, is similar, but it's about optimizing your online presence to attract more business from relevant local searches. So from searches in specific geographical locations, and that can be, can be towns, can be counties. Um, yeah, typically, um, we don't really, we're not really talking much wider than, um, than county level, probably when we're talking about local SEO. Um, any business with a physical location that serves customers in a specific area, will benefit from local SEO. So hopefully that applies to um, a lot of you um, tuning in today. So for one of the first elements of local SEO that I'm sure most of you will probably be familiar with from your own Google searches is something called the local pack. So you can see here um, an example search result from a search I've put into Google, quite simple. I search for plumbers in Stafford. And we get the um, local pack here, which is three results, which Google um, deems the best match to your query. So you'll see three businesses listed in that um, in that local pack, in that local pack, and uh, and on the map. Um, you can obviously click on more businesses, and more businesses will load. But just like you want to rank on page one of Google, um, you're trying to get listed in that uh, in that local pack is is really uh, one of the goals here. So you can see that search has returned. Three plumbing companies, um, and the caveat here is that the, the third of those, Plum Gas Services Limited, is a, is a company that we've been working with for the last um, 18 months or so um, on their website and also, also the local SEO. So we'll actually be using those guys as a, as a um, reference um, throughout. So just digging a bit deeper into the local pack. You can see that um, I've got an example here. This is actually for ourselves. So I've clicked on um, our map location and you can see that uh, I've then got more information about us as a business. So you can see things like um, address, opening times, phone number, popular times, um, photos, directions, website link, um, reviews is a really important one that we'll come on to in a bit more detail. So that's... Um, that's all the uh, all the different information that people are going to see about your business when they um, when they hopefully find you in um, uh, from a Google search. So um, just to prove that, uh, and I suppose I should add here as well that we're going to focus a lot today on on Google. Um, other search engines clearly do exist. Um, so to prove that, there's an example here from Bing. So this was um, actually a search that I did um, pre-lockdown, obviously, but when I was in Sheffield visiting some friends and I wanted to find a coffee shop or you get local results and um, just just in Bing like you do um, in Google they're displayed slightly differently but as you can see here Bing will actually bring through TripAdvisor ratings um, so again you've got some independence but you've got um, you know, a chain in Starbucks and those star ratings uh, become quite important in, in helping the customer kind of choose which uh, location or business they want to um, they want to opt for but um, just going back to the original point we will focus primarily on um, on Google today, but with a few nods to uh, things like Bing and, and Apple Maps as well. So why is local SEO important? So just some stats really, because we, we all like a few stats just to underline um, underline the, the importance of things. So um, why, like, why is local SEO important and, and why is it gonna help you have a strong online presence in search engines? So, 97% of people learn more about a local company online than anywhere else. That's probably not a massively surprising stat to anyone in this room, but it just goes to show the importance of it and, and the kind of the, the high you know, people go to Google now, they go to search engines to look up a local company. I've just been on the phone to a decorator and the first thing I did was go to Google and look up look at decorators in, in the Stafford area. Um, it, it's just a default thing for, for people to do. And you know, that, I've used plumbers and decorators, but really it applies across so many different uh, examples and, and businesses. And then just to add to that, 92% of searches will pick businesses on the first page of local search results. There's a sort of age old and probably bad SEO joke that I can tell here that's um, where's the best place to, to hide a dead body? And it's on page two of Google. Um, 
So, you know, really, we're talking about that local pack, but we're also talking about, you know, perhaps if you're not ranking across the UK nationally on page one, but really you want to be ranking, um, and we're going to talk about how you can rank on, on page one for, um, for local searches. Um, and just to hammer home those points, here, here's a few more stats that we produced for um, a local SEO infographic that we did earlier this year, I think. Um, I won't go through them all now, and obviously you can have these slides afterwards to have a look through, and the, the quick link is there at the bottom, but just a few to pick out. So 72% of local searches will visit a store within five miles, and 46% of all searches on Google are, are actually seeking um, local information. So hopefully that gives everyone a flavour of you know, just how important it is for your business to be seen, um, yeah, on, on, particularly on page one of Google. So why should you focus on climbing the local rankings? Well, people increasingly tend to include towns, counties, regions when searching for businesses on the web. We've seen a big rise in the amount of people appending pending place names onto, onto searches. And depending on your market, consumers are actually starting to, uh, I guess, you know, trust local businesses over um, larger well-known brands. We had that example there from coffee shops in Sheffield. My natural thing is to, is, rightly or wrongly, is probably to think, I don't want to go to a Starbucks, I want to go to a nice little independent coffee shop. And you know, I think if anything, perhaps we've seen that intensify with, uh, with, with the COVID crisis over the last few months and, and people, are, people just being keen to support local businesses even more. So um, it's definitely an important, important factor. And um, perhaps most importantly, Google, and other search engines want to return the most relevant, precise local search results. So if you're giving Google the right indications that you are um, you are that business, then you know, it, it's, it's a really good thing for you. So now we've got a bit more of an understanding of what local SEO is and, and why it's important. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, like I say, this is, the, this is the meat of the presentation, so the good stuff. So, what can you do for your business to start optimizing for local SEO and start to gain more local customers? Um, Google My Business, I'm sure most of you are aware of it. Really, it's the cornerstone of, of local SEO and improving search visibility in, in, um, in search engines for local terms. So claiming and optimizing your Google My Business um, profile, if you haven't already, is, is, is an absolute must. You can see here an example of just a random um, cafe that I picked that so if, if they've not claimed it, you'll see this little um, own this business and, and actually you can go and look up your business and you can claim it. And Google will take you through a verification process and um, you'll probably have to use your business phone number, etc. But it's a fairly easy process. So if you haven't already claimed it, absolutely do it. Um, but then really claiming it is just a start. So then we want to look at how we optimize the profile to, uh, to improve your local search rankings so what can you do to optimize your google my business profile well um equality as usual is key here so we've seen this in the past that like we've seen businesses still try and do this don't try and stuff keywords into your business name so you know, if we were doing it bad practice for ourselves we might try something like kanika digital seo and ppc agency and you don't do that google's going to see straight through that and it's it's just um it's just seen as spammy if, if nothing else when it comes to choosing your categories so you can choose up to 10 categories in google my business that suit your business you can only select one primary category but that's the most important in google's algorithm be as specific as possible when choosing your google my business categories don't feel like you have to pick 10 because the more specific you are, the fewer businesses you'll actually be competing against um, for customers. And then um, this is simple stuff really, but it's amazing how many people still don't do it. So make sure all of your details are accurate. So including your address, phone, opening hours, um, we'll come on to a bit more about this shortly as well. Um, another example here, it's not, not a client of ours, but um, somewhere I'm very familiar with, um, so Candid Beer in Stafford, I uh, yeah, wanted to know once, uh, I think um, when they were open during, during COVID um, for Click and Collect, and yeah, they've just done a really good job throughout of, of updating their opening hours um, throughout the, um, 
because their hours have changed quite a lot throughout the coronavirus crisis, but they've kept that up to date. So it's dead simple, but it's just setting that expectation for the customer of when they know they can come and see you in store or, or you know, when, when you're operating. Um, and the other thing is don't try and use virtual office addresses. Um, you know, for example, we've got satellite offices across the country, but we don't plug them into Google My Business because they are just um, yeah, satellite offices. They're not actually our physical location. So we, yeah, we, we don't try and game the system like that. Um, if you don't have a physical shop front or office, then you can just leave your business location empty. Just make sure that you include a list of locations in the service areas section. Google Posts, so this is something we've seen, um, it's been around for, for a while, but it, we've seen Google place more and more importance and, and give more weighting to people using Google Posts um, for, for local SEO. So picked out Plum Gas here as an example again. They've uh, started to utilize these posts a bit more, but uh, effectively it's a chance to show off your latest news, offers, events, products, um, could be blog posts, they almost see it as an extension of your, of your on-site blog or your social content. So if you've got a, yeah, a, new, a new service that you've um, added or a new product that you want to shout about, use Google Posts and this will actually appear in your um, Google My Business profile when people have found you on, on Google. Um, you know, bonus points here as well, if you're mentioning your local area um, in, in any of these posts. Plum Gas here have done, they've done an okay job of it. You know, we've encouraged them to start using it more as a nice photo of the team. We try and encourage you know, good engaging copy uh, and a strong call to action. So they've got a call to action of, of call now, which is absolutely fine. That's really good. Um, but perhaps they might want to look at expanding the copy that they've used. Um, I think this is just, you know, it's fairly basic. Any plumbing and heating queries give our office a call today. They, they could probably expand on that a, a little bit better. Um, loads of different CTAs available to you when you use Google Posts. So if it's e-commerce, you're probably going to be looking at order now or buy now. If you're a tradesperson, um, more around book an appointment. Restaurants can use view menu. Or if you're a service provider like Plum Gas, then you might want to use something like call now or, or learn more. But um, as I say, th these, are, these are really good. Even if you're doing it, the, the posts expire after a week. So it's something you need to keep on top of as well. So just... If you've got a good process in place for managing your social content and your blog, just add this into that schedule. Um, we've talked about it, we've mentioned um, Bing briefly, but also Apple Maps. So Google My Business is important and that's where the bulk of the searches are happening, but you know, clearly people are using um, Siri and Apple Maps to, to search for businesses as well. So here's an example I took um, off my phone. So find, find me plumbers in Stafford. I asked Siri and Siri's come back with five results from, from Apple Maps and you can see Plum Gas are, are, are down there. Um, yeah, don't, don't ignore Bing places and Apple Maps. It's free, it's dead easy to sign up. It's a similar process to be honest to Google My Business. It will take you through the verification steps. It's gonna help you reach a wider audience um, and then just again, make sure that you check those uh, listings for accuracy. You want to make sure that um, yeah, all those all those listing details are, are correct across all your different profiles. So NAP, um, it's just an SEO term, but all it is is name, address, phone number. So yeah, this has been around for a very long time in SEO. Goes back to sort of um, website directories and, and listing your website. So the most important things that you get consistent are your name, address, and phone number. Again, sounds dead simple. Well, it's because it is simple, but um, again, you'd be amazed how many businesses we see that have used, have got two different phone numbers um, and have used one on one on their website and one on their Google My Business or one on their Facebook page. Basically, any discrepancies in your basic contact information can negatively affect your local SEO. So that could just be a variation in your address. Um, if you've shortened something in your address, you want to make sure it's as close to, or it is 100% accurate um, across all of your profiles and listings across the across the internet. Um, recommend including it in the footer of your website as well. So again, this is an example from, from the footer of Plum Gas. They've got their, um, their core contact information in, in the footer there. And there are actually tools out there that can help you audit um, your listings as well. So Moz is an SEO tool that we use. And if you stick it into their local um, 
we've got a specific local tool. If you stick it in there, it will actually tell you where you're listed online and it will tell you if you've got inconsistencies in, in any of that data as well. Just to hammer home that point, this is a quote directly from Google. So local results favour the most relevant results for each search and businesses with complete and accurate information are easier to match with the right searches. So um, yeah, so just reiterating that point that Google is going to reward the people um, that have, have spent the time giving them the, the correct information. So local citations or really, again, a bit of an SEO term. We're talking about website directories so what are these website directories well there's hundreds of directories available as a general rule of thumb what i'd say is the most trusted ones are actually free so be wary of the ones that are asking you to pay might not be a lot but there's directories out there that might ask you to pay 10 20 pounds a year for a profile on their website well actually if you stick to the sort of most high profile trusted ones yellow pages yelp thompson local free index they're the ones that have got good domain authority, they're not spammy, and, and they actually get syndicated to other directories as well. So um, yeah, concentrate on those ones. There's different citations and directories out there relevant to your industry as well, perhaps. So there'll be a directory dedicated to accountancy or to catering companies or, or to bars. So um, you try and try and get listed if possible in um, in, in relevant directories for your sector. You know, why is it important? Well, if you do well, take the plumbers in Stafford example, if you do a search on that, you'll probably actually find that what ranks higher organically than most of the independent companies are things like Yellow Pages and Yelp. So they'll have a local directory for plumbers and that page will actually rank probably one or two on Google and they consistently rank high for most local searches. So even if you're not on page one, you can piggyback on page one by making sure that you're listed on, on you know, in, in that directory and in that, in that category. And you're gonna earn referral traffic from it as well. So you know, people do actually still use these directories to look at businesses. So um, yeah, Yelp's got a bit of a reputation for people using it for restaurants, for example, but yeah, you, you should actually see people um, you know, coming to your website because they found you on, on one of these directories. Social profiles counts as well in terms of your um, going back to that nap, but also it's just a strong local SEO indicator. So Plum Gas here is an example. You can see under the about information, they've made sure that all that information is consistent with what they've got on all those other um, on their website and on their um, in all their other um, directories and listings as well. Good idea to include a couple of local keywords in your bio and your profile info to just make it obvious that if you serve a certain town or, or area, make sure you put that in your um, social bios and, and infos and, and reviews are important as well. So um, we're about to come on to a bit more about reviews, but Google will actually look at review sentiment on third party sites such as Facebook to gauge the quality of businesses and reward them accordingly. So while Google doesn't actually consider social media interactions like likes, shares, comments, etc. in ranking web pages. It does count towards a sort of businesses prominence online. So prominence could be you know the amount of times you're blogging, your reviews, your interactions on social. So the stronger your prominence, the, the greater the chance you've got of, uh, of ranking locally as well. So we've talked about reviews. Uh, another stat here: 80% of consumers read reviews from local businesses. Again, perhaps not that surprising, but reviews are incredibly, incredibly powerful. So don't be afraid to ask your customers for reviews for a start. Um, if build it into your customer service strategy if you're not already. If you're following up with customers after they've had a um, after they've had an installation or they've purchased something from you, whether it's a day later, a week later, follow it up with an email and, and send them a link to to your Google My Business or your review platform. And, and get them to review it. Typically, we like to. Well, if you, you can be using FIFA or Trustpilot, but um, you know, unsurprisingly, Google reviews are a really powerful um, ranking factor in local SEO. So, the more kind of Google reviews you can get, um, the better. So, uh, I think there's another stat here that I didn't put on this slide, but 57% of consumers, customers searching for a business online will actually only choose that business if it's rated more than four stars. Um, and 
make sure that you respond to every review in a professional manner. So whether it's positive, negative, take the time to respond. Um, and if you get a bad feedback, obviously be quick to address it, but you know, do it professionally. It's not, it's not the time, even if you feel it's unfair, it's not the time to get into, it's not the place to get into a slanging match, try and take it, try and take it offline. Um, link building. So link building is uh, a very important part of you know, traditional SEO and, and that's certainly true for local SEO as well. So the more relevant backlinks you get typically, so i.e. links back from other websites to your site, the better your citations and directory links do count towards the number of backlinks. But for this purpose, we're actually going to look at other types of backlinks that you can get outside of just directory. So here we're talking about trying to take advantage of relationships that you've already built. So um, some suggestions here, if you're the member, a member of an industry body or you've got trusted suppliers and partners that you work with or local bloggers that you can work with, local events listings, links back from relevant local sites are also incredibly powerful. I picked out a few examples here of backlinks that Kanuka have acquired over, over the last six, 12 months. So. Um, strain my eyes here to see it but you can see the, the top one there that I've highlighted is from magento.com so magento is a, one of the world leading e-commerce um, platforms it's actually the platform that our parent agency iWeb developed sites in but we, iWeb have got a profile on that um, on that website as a partner and actually within that profile we've, we've linked managed to link back to Kanuka as well as a um, as a digital marketing service provider so that's an incredibly powerful backlink for us to have from you know a really well trusted and um, high traffic website so you know even if it's not as it might not be on that same scale but still i can guarantee if you sat there and listed uh, you know like partners and, and bodies that you're a member of you'd be able to think of opportunities that you could build some more backlinks from and quality as always is, is most important here. It doesn't need to be hundreds of backlinks, just getting a handful of really good relevant links is, is, is really powerful. And then the other example I've highlighted is press release. So Stoke Sentinel, so we did a press release about um, a new package that we released um, fairly recently to support local businesses during the um, COVID crisis and that got shared on the Stoke Sentinel. So again, that, that's a really powerful backlink for us to have um, it's obviously good brand awareness for us but um, it's, a, it's a really good backlink for us to have from from a local um, a local newspaper as well so so far we've looked at all the off-page SEO factors and um, now just want to spend a little bit of time looking at on-page factors so i.e things on your website that you can optimize to improve your local ranking so primarily we're looking at things like keywords including um, locations just website copy in general, your metadata, header tags on the page, again, come back to that nap. Also your Google map as well. So making sure that you've got um, yeah, your location listed as a map on, on your site. So for a start, do your keyword research, spend a bit of time carrying out um, research to understand what sort of search terms people are using to find your business. So put yourself in the shoes of your target customers and think about what words and phrases they might use to find your business. We can kind of split keywords into um, this is SEO terms again, um, but fathead keywords and long tail keywords. So fathead is more generic general searches. So digital marketing agency is obviously quite a generic search, but then you get to someone searching for digital marketing agency in the Stafford area, it's a bit more long tail. Um, so it's going to have slightly less search volume, but those search terms are the ones that we tend to see convert better as they're more specific to a user search intent so that digital marketing agency in stafford area is actually a search term that led someone into our website last week in an inquiry and a proposal that we're now putting together so just a, a nice real life example of um, the benefit of us ranking on page one for a search term like that and, and people coming through and, and contacting us so if you need some help doing that keyword research this kind of a whole of the talk that I, I could do around keyword research on, a, on another day if I'm allowed back but you can use tools like Google Keyword Planner which is free um, or Moz which is a, an SEO tool that we subscribe to as an agency but anyone anyone can sign up to it and there's, and there's various various um, sort of entry levels that you can use to do your keyword research 
And then once you've done that research, really it's about how you then use that to inform um, the copy on your website. So you can start writing copy and optimizing around some of those search terms. So um, if the main point here is to always, always, always write naturally and write for the user and don't try and write for search engines. You know, the days of keyword stuffing and just listing out, um, just li listing out your whole list of services and putting them as a, in your footer as if like, you know, it could be Digital Martin Stafford, Digital Martin Stoke and just listening in your footer. That's not really going to cut it. It's more about the landing pages you have on your site and, and dropping it naturally into, into your copy, if that makes sense. So um, include like your location and the, and the services you offer on key pages. So include it on your homepage. If you're, if you're um, offering a service in, in the Stoke area, you know, just say that, put it, put it up front and clear on your, on your homepage, but also in your service pages and in your about page as well. I'm just giving Google those really strong indicators of um, the services you offer in specific locations. Some different types of search intent there. That I've just used as an example again on ourselves, but you might find that you're getting, um, we kind of split it into three, um, three sort of different types of intent. So transactional, so if they're looking to make a purchase, information if they're just looking for more a bit more information about a service and that's where perhaps your blogs or your faqs could uh, come into effect or just navigational so are they trying to find directions to a local business so um that might just be as simple as what we're about to talk about uh, in, a, in a minute is having good directions in a map on your on your contact page metadata um so not sure how many of you are going to be familiar with metadata but um, really, all, all we're talking about here is um, your meta titles and descriptions, and that's what you see when you've done a search in Google. So, top example here is for Plum Gas. So, the meta title for their homepage is you're not seeing that on their actual web web page on their homepage, but you're seeing it in Google. So, the meta title is telling Google and um, helping search engines understand what your page is about. So, their meta title is Stafford Plumbers, Stafford Boiler Services, Plumbers Near Me. Whereas you've got a meta description which is um, for our other um, client, Tar Giant. So they've got a hundred stores and then for every single store on their, um, in, in the country, they've got a page on their website dedicated to that store. So they've taken the time to write a unique meta description for, um, for, for each store. And they've included useful information like free parking, open seven days a week and bank holidays. So um, the important thing to note there is that meta descriptions aren't actually a ranking factor. So Google's not going to read your description and see, right, you're talking about this service in this area, but I'm, I'm kind of rank you higher. But what it is going to do is, is help you get better click throughs so when people do find you in Google. If you've taken the time to write a good meta description, almost think of it as like a mini advert for your business almost. If you've written something unique there, then it could be the difference between a customer clicking on your website versus clicking on a competitor website. So include your SPs, include a call to action. Um, metadata should be fairly easy to update. It depends what your website's built on, but any kind of good content management platform, we use WordPress a lot, um, will, allow you to, will allow you to change these. And then finally, embed maps. So it, it, it's not rocket science. Google likes you to embed a Google map on their website. It's one of their tools, but it's just another really good strong indicator of where your business is located. Let your customers know exactly where you are. Um, typically, again, we'd look at probably putting it either in your footer or, or probably on your contact page. Um, you could put it up, some people put it on the home page as well. But um, yeah, I've just taken an example here from, so again, for Tile Giant, we'll have a Google map for every single one of their stores on each of the store pages on their website. Um, and then other website factors, so, if there's over 200 ranking factors that go into where a website ranks. So we've talked about local SEO, but really it's just, it's a niche of SEO. So all the regular SEO factors still apply. So fast, particularly on mobile, secure, fully mobile responsive, you know, good professional design, try and avoid sort of stock and your stock photography, um, sensible, well-structured navigation, all those factors and the quality of your website will actually come into effect as well as all those things that we've just talked about. If you've not done an audit of your site recently, strongly recommend that you do that. And um, you know, run it through Google's PageSpeed Insights. If you're not already using Google Search Console, 
sign up um, and you'll get some really good insights as to the performance of your website in search. So you'll be able to see if you've got indexing issues or if certain pages are loading really slowly. So yeah, take the time to audit the site because you could do all those other factors that we just talked about, but if the site isn't built on good foundations, then um, it's still gonna be really hard for you to, for you to rank. Just a few success stories before we wrap up. Um, Plum gas that we talked about, so it's a nice case study for the Chambers because we met them at the Chambers networking event at the start of 2019. And um, since then we took on, we didn't design or build a website, but we've taken on the maintenance and hosting and done lots of improvements there on site content and expanded landing pages and added pages for certain services. You know, and all that's led to, hopefully you can see some of the searches here for the last few months of 2020 versus the last few months of 2019. And they're actually now getting thousands of impressions for search terms like plumbers near me, bathroom fitters, uh, boiler service near me, local plumbers. So yeah, they weren't ranking on page one before, they are now. And the, those numbers are a testament to um, the, the increase they've seen in a 400% increase in average monthly website inquiries that they're actually just getting through um, from Google Google Organic, that's taken out any of their PPC or other activity. Um, practice what you preach, so we'll do this for ourselves. So our new site went live in March 2018, um, and you can see there that's the chart in the growth of the organic traffic in that time, so steady increases the whole time. Um, and that's from doing all the things we spoke about, having a really good content strategy, so we publish regular blog content that's and there's thought that goes into that blog content, but um, we've done stuff dedicated to our services in, in the Staffordshire area. Um, and that's, again, just seen fantastic increases in clicks from Google searches. And you know, we're actually outranking competitors who have um, been operating for a lot longer than ourselves and have had websites live for a lot longer than ourselves as well. And you know, great that we're, we're now actually getting leads coming through from people searching for local marketing agencies um, and Tile Giant. So we do all their SEO, but if you just take the local aspect of it, they're now ranking in the local pack for most of their stores across the UK, just by optimizing those store landing pages on their website. So better on-page content, header tags, putting the Google Maps on there. Um, yeah, it's just you know, massively improved. And um, their people, particularly on mobile, people searching for the example there is people searching for um, tile stores in in Stoke, and you can see Tile Giant are, are coming up number one there above some of their competitors. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavour of um, yeah, just the success that that can be had just by optimising, taking the time to to optimise for local SEO. Um, I feel like I've spoken enough, uh, everyone, for now. So we'll see perhaps if there's any questions shortly. Um, just a bit of further reading. So you've all got, um, you'll get access to these slides afterwards, but some guides that we've done and written ourselves. Um, and then also just a bit of extra content from official Google advice on how to improve your local rankings, because always good to see straight from the horse's mouth, as it were. And then um, there's a really good Miles Local SEO cheat sheet it's a free download that would um, I definitely recommend uh, downloading as well. So finally, just to recap, claim and optimize your Google My Business profile. Don't forget Bing Places and Apple Maps. Make sure that your nap is consistent across the web. Review all your on-page elements. Use utilize existing relationships to build more backlinks. Ask customers for reviews. Build it into your strategy, and uh, give your website a good a good health check as well. And I think. Hopefully that is all from me. So hopefully there's been some useful insights in there. SEO is a long game, but I can honestly promise you if you take the time to invest in it now, it will, it will pay off uh, further down the line. So yeah, that's, that's it for me for now. I'm happy to take any questions. Brilliant, Joe. Thank you so much for that. That was really, really informative. Thank you. And I actually think I probably learned a couple of things myself as well, which is always good. Um, no. Just, just um, for anybody that wants to ask Joe a question now, now's your time to do so. Pop it in the Q&A for me. If you want to ask him a live question, so you want to talk to him personally, um, please pop your digital hand up and we'll, let you, we'll allow you to talk as well. Um, you do already have a question, um, Joe, which is great. Good. Um, so um, the first question is, uh, where 
where will we be heading in the next five years in regards to shouting for website attention? In regards to shouting for website attention? Yes, you've put shouting. Do you, um, do you want to just elaborate a little bit on your question or do you want me to go to you live? Just let me know which is which is best for you. Just so we can get a bit of clarification. Yeah, it'd be, be good to just understand a bit more about that question. Bear with me. Nick, are you happy for me to unmute you so you can ask your question? Oh, um, he means as in getting ahead of the crowd. Ah, okay. Um, well, I, I think, oh, I've, I've, sorry, I've just seen that I've got access to the question as well. So, um, yeah, I th the main thing is, um, I don't know what, um, what sort of sector or business you're in there, Nick, but the, the main thing is um, just keeping on top of it. It's, it maybe sounds like a bit of a cop-out answer, but it, it's just, it's quality. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you need to be doing, you need to spend X amount of money on your website or you need to be doing X amount of blogs per month or anything like that. But it, it's just about making sure, you know, you could be a five-page website, it could be a hundred-page website. It, it's all about making sure that your website, you know, is, is really crystal clear at, um, sort of just putting it out there as to um okay you see so you're an outdoor market in newcastle under lime so yeah what what your produce is you know get some really good photos on there you could even get as far as doing some little videos of uh, virtual tours of like what you know what people can expect when they come down to the market but um you know it doesn't need to be you don't need to spend like you know through the roof on, on a good website for for that kind of business but if you go to the efforts of getting all those local seo factors on there I don't know, for example, if you're perhaps looking at maybe thinking of selling online as well in future. So obviously you could bolt on e-commerce elements into into the website. But for now, if you're just concentrating on that physical presence, then you have to do all those things that we've kind of um, just, just spoken about. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, perfect. So as you said, thank you very much. Um, brilliant. Anybody else got any questions or want to ask anything live? Uh, yeah, do you, do you want to read the yeah. question as well, Joe? I know that you can see them there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I can see them now. So, out of all the tips you've mentioned, which would you say is most important to implement first? Um, so, I would say perhaps the easiest one to start with, and the, and the best one is is you Google my business profile because even if you've claimed it, there's probably things in there that you could do to better optimize that profile. So, just do an audit of, of all the information on there, make sure you've got accurate open hours, start using Google posts, start um, start getting more Google customer reviews. That's probably one that I would say is a really good one to start with is if you're not already doing it, is, is come up with a good strategy for how you're gonna ask customers for, for reviews. If you don't have that many customers, it makes it nice and easy because you can just do it on a, um, on a more personal basis and you can just contact your customers um, you know directly but if you've got more and you're selling products then yeah you might want to just do it in a sort of automated email follow-up so yeah start with start with your google my business profile brilliant fantastic thank you for that joe and um, anybody else got any more questions or anything like that any more questions for joe just before we finish the session today i'll just give it a couple of minutes joe Okay, yeah, no problem. If, uh, if, if anyone's feeling particularly shy, feel free to drop me a line afterwards as well. Happy to take any questions. I know it can take a while to type in the, in the Q&A box, you see, and it, it takes a while to come up. So just making sure um, we've got everyone. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Well, we're just waiting for that. Um, it's just to remind you, um, if you joined halfway through or you missed the first part of the session today, you will be able to watch the webinar back on our uh, website, uh, staffordshirechambers.co.uk. Uh, so you will be able to do that today um, uh, sometime after tomorrow um, just to see the recording of this as well. Joe, I'm going to be honest with you. I think we're done for today. Um, I think there's any more questions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, <so not laughs> Um...
Fantastic. Um, obviously, Joe's put his details up, but please um, don't hesitate to contact the Chamber should you need any more details about any of the webinars uh, coming up as well. Uh, Joe, I just want to say a massive thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody soon and hopefully work with you soon, Joe. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.